You may be about to go on your summer vacation, but it's not too early to think about fall travel. Our neighbor to the north, Canada, has a wide range of unique experiences and outdoor activities that can be good for the body and the mind. Destinations like Quebec have everything from historic cities to relaxing spas to hiking in national parks. Nate spoke with travel expert Onika Raymond about fall travel in Canada. Let's talk about Canada. So most people don't know that Canada is a great location to watch the Northern Lights. But where do you recommend people travel to to get a great glimpse? Right. So as you said, a lot of people do not realize that Canada is a wonderful place to see the Northern Lights. And in fact, you can see them up to 300 days a year. Mm. So if you want to get that maximal viewing right. uh, aspect of it all, uh -huh. I would recommend that you head to Churchill, Manitoba, okay. to the okay. Northwest Territories, and also to the Yukon. And what you find with these regions is that they are found beneath what is known as the auroral oval. Auroral oval, okay. Say that five oh, times oh, fast. Oh, yeah, it's a mouthful. <laughs> and uh, that is kind of a, a prime viewing spot that allows you to see more clearly the mm. Northern Lights. Okay, let's move to Central Canada. There are some great outdoor adventures and activities in that region, right? There are indeed, and look, I am actually from Central Canada. Okay. I grew up outside of Toronto, so it's, yeah, there we it's go. kind of my thing. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> uh, but I would recommend that you check out Niagara on the Lake. Now, this is a beautiful, quaint town. It sounds town. beautiful, it Niagara sounds... on the Lake. Exactly, um, you're going to, particularly in the fall, have really wonderful leaf peeping opportunities mm. and also you can do great scenic bike rides along the Niagara Parkway so again once again you're gonna go and, and feel rejuvenated and yeah. feel good about yourself this region is also known for vineyards correct it is. Um, some great wine tasting um, what, what makes that so special? And I know you actually brought a bottle, too. So <laughs> as you're telling me about the great wine in Canada, um, talk about the vineyards there. So the area around Niagara on the Lake, within a 30-minute drive, there are over 50 vineyards. Wait, say that again? 50. Over a 30-minute drive? A 30-minute drive. vineyards? Yes. Wow. And Niagara on the Lake is actually home to some of the oldest and most well-established uh, wine-producing vineyards in all of Canada. Mm. And the grapes in this region region are very flavorful in particular due to a specific microclimate oh, that they okay. have there. Right. So again, this is some place that you want to go. I would recommend checking out Peller Estates, which is where this, this Cabernet Franc is okay. from. Mind if I take a sip? I do not mind at all. I don't get to drink that okay. on the show. <laughs> Can we cheers first? Oh, there, yeah, you're right. I'm tripping. I mean. It's on me. <laughs> Cheers to Canada. <laughs> Cheers to Canada. Um, and again, really flavorful wines. Now, mm. Peller Estates has been around for over 50 years. They're open all year round. So definitely add this to your itinerary when you're in Niagara on the This Lake. is fantastic. Isn't it, though? Yeah, and I can mm. see what you're talking about when it comes to the flavor. Mm. Because this really does, like, dance on the tongue. Yeah, so the varietals that they have are very similar to, uh, for example, uh, some of the wine that's produced in Burgundy in France. Mm -hmm. So again, you're, you're getting this in Canada, which is amazing. Yeah, um, there's family-friendly activities in this region as well, right? There are indeed. So as I said, I grew up uh, outside of Toronto. One of the things that I love doing when I go back to that area is going apple picking. Oh, yeah. Apple picking is so great for the entire family, oh, whether God. you are one-year-old or 100 years old. Core memory activated exactly. every time you go. And every time I go back with uh, my daughter at this time of year, we definitely go. <laughs> now, there's an orchard that is called the Dixie Orchards. It's very Dixie close Orchards. to okay. where I grew up. Um, and again, it's scenic. You're able to engage in leaf peeping and apple picking. And it's just a really lovely activity to do as a family. Let's move on to Quebec, uh, because you have a wide range of experiences from urban to outdoor activities. Quebec is really special, right? It is. I, go, I always got to shout out Quebec. Now, Quebec is the French-speaking part of Canada. Huh? Uh, and one of the things I really love about Quebec is that it's close by, but it feels so much like I Europe. I love those types of locations. Explain that a little bit more. It, it, yes. it feels like you're in Canada, but you're also in a completely different part of Canada. 100%. So linguistically and culturally is different. French is spoken, yeah. uh, particularly in Quebec City. And Quebec City is this very very quaint, kind of cute, small town. Yeah. Uh, it's giving France. It's giving France. In North yeah. America. Yeah. Uh, and they have a I really love lovely old town. Now, it's actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's one of the mm. oldest cities really? in North America, over 400 years old. And uh, here you can see in this image, this is the Petit Champlain uh, Petit area. Champlain. Petit Champlain. Petit Champlain. On parle français, okay. bien sûr. And, um, you know, I think what's really lovely about it is that you obviously have this kind of European feel, but a short yeah. flight away 
from here. Well, we appreciate you joining us. Thank you so much. Let's toast once again well, toast to once Canada. More. You know, Onika is like Carmen San Diego, so she's everywhere. <laughs> so follow her on Instagram. I know I will. Next time she travels, I'm traveling with her. For more information on travel activities in Canada, visit CanadaOffSeason.com.